Welcome to my first ever low elo tier lists. This tier list is designed for heroes that are especially powerful below diamonds and typically are heroes that are easy to get value out of, aka their value floor. Starting off in the F tier, and this one is unfortunate, it's Roadhog. Yes, this guy is still ass in top 500, just as he is in bronze. Hog no longer has his carry potential, and he's basically a no battery for most tanks in the game. He requires really good positioning and hook accuracy just to get something out of him. In the E tier, I have Mercy. Mercy isn't bad per se in the lower ranks, but considering you need a competent DPS player or just a competent team to get the most out of your damage boost, she really doesn't have much skill expression in low elo. All the fancy movement tech you can do doesn't even come into play until you get into the higher ranks. After Mercy, I have Winston. It's really Orisa players that are gonna make your life a misery. Sure, you can without a doubt play around the enemy Orisa or just counter picks in general, but it's significantly easier for the Orisa to outplay you than the other way around. Plus, in low elo, the value floor for your primal is sky high. In other words, the average player isn't gonna get value out of it. After Winston, I have Wrecking Ball. A high skill hero who, if you know how to play well, can easily dominate low elo lobbies. But that's the problem. If you're low elo watching this video, you're not gonna have the skill to dominate your lobbies on ball. Not to mention, he falls off in value the higher you climb. For similar reasons, Woodermaker is finishing off the eater. Good positioning, sightlines, and angles can only get you so far. If you have bronze level mechanics, that's gonna show. Now entering the D tier, I have Sombra. Sombra's value floor is pretty high. Maximizing your uptime with translocator placements and cover usage, and timing your EMP and just general pressure well is quite intensive. Thankfully, hacking a tank and just farming them, or hacking a support and blitzing them down, isn't so difficult to do in low elo. After Sombra, I have Mei. In lower elo, it can be really hard to utilize Mei's walls on maps that don't benefit her architecture. King's Row and Colosseo provide narrow, short silent areas that are obvious for walls, but as soon as you extend out the map to things like Havana, it's gonna become noticeably harder. After Mei, I have Phara. Low elo Phara's aren't too hard to outplay. Her value floor is actually not that high, having large AoE rockets and fairly intuitive movements. And it's only really in the high ranks where you need a mercy to make far work. Good cover usage can only get you so far. Next up, I have Sojourn. A lot of power is in a railgun, which, like I said, Widowmaker, comes down to mechanical skill, which low elo players don't often have. Her value floor is pretty darn high. Learning how to use power slides and when to retain it, alongside your ultimates being entirely mechanically based, makes Sojourn a hard hero to pick up in low elo. Ending off the D tier, I have Symmetra. This hero has been power crept for years now. Two short orbs, turrets that slow and give you wall hacks, a teleport that provides insane mobility for either yourself or for your team. People just don't know how to play this hero and utilize our kits, which obviously shows because not many people in low elo actually know how to play Symmetra. Now entering the C tier, I have Genji. Again, a pretty mechanically based hero, but I don't think his value floor is ridiculously high or inaccessible. To me, wall climbing to high grounds and tossing up fans of shurikens doesn't seem too big of an ask for me. You also don't need to be a god at the game to get value out of his ultimates. After Genji, I have Cassidy. Not that he's a bad pick in low elo, considering his ultimate can definitely pick up a few free kills, and his extra trunk gives him that more sustain against dive based heroes, it's just that those things aren't necessarily valuable in low elo. His peacekeeper is harder to use than Ash's Viper or Soldier's Rifle, and they have easier ultimates to use and more consistent damage. After Cassidy, I have Brigitte. You can threaten any squishy hero in the entire game and basically save any hero with one or two repair packs in low elo, where target focus is non existent. But Brig hasn't got any direct carry potential to drag you out of platinum. After Brig, I have Lucio. A hero with a lot of carry potential, but with a relatively high value ceiling as an ask. You need to have the mechanics not just to wall ride, but to duel and threaten enemy DPS while also having the awareness of knowing when to peel back for your team or when to help speed in. I recommend watching my Lucio guide for a more detailed rundown. After Lucio, I have Doom. Most low elo Dooms will mistime their engages, miss their shots, waste their power block, and miss their empowered punches. But just a little bit of competency on this hero can bring back some pretty sizable rewards. After Doomfist, I have Junker Queen. The biggest issue with low elo Junker Queens is that they constantly miss their knives. Listen to me when I say that a knife is basically a hog hook. If you land the knife, you're either guaranteed a kill or a great cooldown trade. 
You knife Zarya, you force Bubble. You knife Kiriko, you force Suzu and TP. This is what really differentiates the mediocre, good, and great Queen players. Speaking about Kiriko, she's up next. Honestly, the playstyle stuff isn't even that hard, Awkward kind of proofed that with his 4 step Kiriko guides, but it's really the mechanical stuff that can restrict a lot of players. If you miss all your kunais, you're going to be doing less damage than the other Kiriko, who will be hitting all their kunais. After Kiriko, I have Junkrats. Yes, his value floor is quite low, but you'll need to know how to consistently flank and get off your one-shot combos reliably in order to keep up in the DPS role. And that stuff is kind of necessary to do beyond Platinum. Finishing off the C tier, I have Sigma. High specific accuracy and corner management make Sigma's value floor moderate. Zoning out backlines from afar and knowing when to push and go aggressive can be a tough task to do. Now entering the B tier, I have Echo. I think a lot of low elo Echo players really struggle playing into hit scans due to poor cover usage. Even I experience it myself sometimes. But with that being said, she's just an incredibly flexible hero who's able to spam pretty easily and get a decent one shot combo off with her beam. Next up, I have Tracer. I recently made a video on her, but one of the points that I raised was that she doesn't really need much to get value out of. Yes, she does have the highest skill ceiling in the game, but just being sufficient in a few key areas, like tracking, trigger discipline, and corner usage, will yield great results. After Tracer, I have D.Va. D.Va has a similar case to Tracer, with a very high skill ceiling, but not needing much skill to get decent value out of. Just mark your off angles, and stop stacking main, and you'll basically be diamond instantly. Next up, I have Reinhardt. Pin is extremely useful in low elo, because you can get away with crazy shits. In fact, that's probably the number one biggest thing for low elo Reinhardt's to work on. You can afford to be a bit more sloppy with how you play. However, his limiting factor is just his flexibility, especially when compared to Ramatra. After Ryan, I have Zen. Zen's a bit of a tricky one, because he can either be really easy to play in lower ranks, but also really hard in some situations. Circuit Royale first point defense, you just hold M1. But Numbani's second point attack against Dive, that can be really tough to work around. After Zen, I have Hanzo. Now while, yes, you do have to hit your shots like every other sniper in the game, Hanzo provides more flexibility when compared to your average sniper. The random one-shots, the sonic scouting information, the rapid burst damage of your storm arrow, you don't have to be hitting heads to do stuff on Hanzo. After Hanzo, I have Ash. The extra time taken between shots allows for better crosshair placement, as well as her coach gun giving her mobility, and her dynamite giving added damage, which isn't too hard to hit. Your ultimate is also extremely easy to use, so there's that bonus. The penultimate hero in the B tier is Baptiste. While you should never do this, you can get quite a lot of value from Baptiste with just your healing, likewise the Life Weaver. And that's only the beginning with Baptiste. Sure, his mechanics are hard, but likewise to Hanzo, it doesn't take much to start doing stuff on the hero. Specifically, dealing damage and fighting for flanks. And lastly, in the B tier, I have Iliari. A similar case to Baptiste, honestly, but with a greater emphasis on the damage output more than anything else. She's super forgiving with her healing pylon, which never gets destroyed at low elo, and is only handicapped by your value coming directly from your mechanics. Starting off in the A tier, I have Moira. The classic low elo stomper. You can pretty much duel anyone in the entire game with Moira at low elo, and the best part is, you don't need any mechanical skill to do it. In slightly higher ranks, where you, where you will need better micro and better timing, this can become harder to do. But in low elo, that shit does not matter. After Moira, I have Arna. A similar case to Baptiste where, yes, on paper, she can be quite mechanically demanding. However, her value floor is actually pretty accessible. Considering the majority of your Kai value comes from landing nades, which shouldn't be too hard to land, as well as hitting clutch nanos, Arna can be relatively easy to climb out of elo hell with. Next up, I have Reaper. Only bolstered by the Zarya meta we're currently in, Reaper's simple to understand playstyles, only being to either flank or to frontline makes him a very cookie cutter hero to use at the lower ranks. As you climb, because Reaper hasn't got much flexibility, he struggles without a Zarya. But in low elo, just teleport on a flank or on the backline at the right time, and you can get a lot done. After Reaper, I have Orisa. Despite being slightly weakened by the current patch that we're in, Orisa is still a potent hero in the right hands. Likewise the Queen's Knife, Orisa's Javelin is really make or break for the hero as you climb. But unlike Queen, a lot of your value also comes down to your cooldown usage and cycling. You're basically invincible at low elo, so use that to your advantage. Taking up the penultimate spot on the A tier, I have Soldier. Self-sufficient, aim but ultimate, has range and mobility, if you just have some decent tracking on Soldier, you can get a lot done with well-timed flanks. Finishing off the A tier, I have Life Weaver. Look, 
This hero is piss easy, I'm not gonna lie. You can heal your flankers without any skill, you can position yourself so defensively that nobody's gonna look at you, and your utility, while not as good as some other heroes, is still decent enough to where, combined with your 20k healing per 10, makes you a very potent hero in low elo. Also, if someone just dives you, you literally just dash away or you platform yourself. Now entering the S tier, I have Zarya. I was actually debating her putting her down a tier, because low elo Zaryas don't really have great bubble usage. But with the cost of bubble being decreased with teammates, meaning it's easier to get charge, you'll see high charge Zaryas moving down your lobbies. After Zarya, I have Bastion. Despite the grenade nerf, low elo players just don't know how to play around Bastion turret cycles. His ultimate is dead easy to use, and should basically be a free kill every time, and even before Bastion got giga buffed, he'd still be in like, low A tier. And finally, finishing off this video, I of course have the Swedish Dwarf, Torbjorn. Every aspect of your kit requires absolutely zero skill, apart from your Cheeto shots. And even then, because your shots have a dumb fire rate, especially in overload, you're basically guaranteed to hit at least some of your Cheeto shots. Not to mention, most people like playing flankers like Tracer and Genji don't even know what they're doing, meaning that they're basically free kills in low elo. And that's it for the video. Shout out to my members, Team Egg, Sloth Dust, Eggs Benny, Ushi, Wix, Broken by 50%, Sussfring, Chris Jones, and Craig. And let me know your thoughts down below. Until next time.